Welcome everyone to the springtime makeup tutorial. As the weather warms up and the flowers start to bloom, it's the perfect time to freshen up your makeup look and embrace the season. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create a gorgeous springtime makeup look, whether you're heading to a picnic in the park or a spring wedding. So grab your makeup and let's get started. Today, I've taken my inspiration from that gorgeous pair of earrings and my yellow blouse. We're gonna take all those crazy fun colors and make them work. Now I started out on clean prepped skin and I've got my SPF already on before I started. Then I sprayed my little stand sponge with a liquid primer by Scandinavia. I recently started using this primer and I'm so impressed with it because it's actually a huge time saver. Instead of having to use a different primer for my eyelids and under my eyes, I just use the one primer. Next up, I've chosen this Catrice HD Liquid Coverage Foundation. This is an ultra lightweight, beautiful, natural matte finish foundation. It's got high coverage, but it looks very natural. It's kind of like a second skin effect, and it's got niacinamide in it. It's sweat proof, transfer proof, and waterproof. It lasts for almost 24 hours, and it is cruelty free and vegan. Now, it's best for people with normal to oily skin types. And the two things that I really love about it is that it's super thin, it feels like nothing on your skin, and when you take selfies, it takes amazing pictures. If you've ever seen a picture of yourself where all of your pores and fine lines are greatly exaggerated, then an HD foundation will actually help with that quite a bit, as will the selfie powder that I use all the time. Next, I'm going to use a little color corrector to take care of some of those dark inner eye areas. This is a fantastic all-around concealer palette. It's only $5, and it really will work for almost any skin tone. I'm using the pink to cover dark shadows on my inner eye. The pink is actually for a much darker skin tone than mine, so I'm mixing it with that lightest color. Now, these are cream-based, but not like a greasy cream. Now, what I like about this is it packs a lot of color in place without being thick, and it stays in place. I'm just using my Saint Blur brush and I'm gonna tap in a bunch of color right on that inner eye on both sides. And then I'm just gonna let it sit there. It's cream makeup, so I want to put it where I want it to be. And then I wanna let it sit there for a while and just warm up. And then in a few minutes, I can go back and buff this out and make it look beautiful. Alternatively, I could have just used my fingers in the makeup which would have warmed it up, and then I could have just pressed it into those areas. It's really up to you how you want to do it. I am not a huge MAC Cosmetics fan. They do have a few things that I love, and this is one of them. This is their MAC Lip Primer. My lips are really dry today, so the primer is actually going to smooth out any roughness and create a more even surface for my lipstick. But this is also a great product for those who have those little lines around their mouth and maybe your lipstick bleeds in there all the time. Even with a lip liner, you just place it around your lips, finger blend, and then go about your regular application. If you still have feathering at that point, you need a different lipstick. Applying lip liner not just around your lips, but actually all over your lips can help with a few different things. Enhancing the longevity of your lipstick, creating a more even base, and intensifying the color. Today, I'm going to be out, and I need my lipstick to last a long time. So I'm going to apply my lip liner all over my lips, and that is going to enhance the look and longevity of the lipstick, as well as create a more polished and even finish. And if you're someone who struggles with lipstick bleeding or feathering, or just wants to make sure that their lipstick stays put for longer, applying the lip liner all over the lips might be a great technique for you to try. And if you are feeling like you're losing a little bit of loss of volume of your lips, you can certainly overline them where you feel it's necessary. I like to add a little bit of volume right in that area on the bottom, not so much in the middle of my lip or in the corners, but just toward the outside to sort of give it a little more plump look. For the top, it's actually much thinner, so I'm going to put a little dot there and show you exactly where I add volume. Keep in mind, if you have very thin lips, extremely thin lips, you want to try this with a very natural looking lip liner, one that matches your lip color perfectly. 
And it's possible that your lips are so thin that even using a lip liner will not work. And in those cases, I say just go for a nice, glimmery, shimmery, sparkly lip gloss to bring some attention to the lips. Next, I applied the L'Oreal Paris Color Rich Lip Color in Saucy Mauve, and I love this color. Now remember, I'm trying to make all these colors in my earrings and my blouse work, so I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of that on my cheek. And look at that darker color. That's almost exactly the same color that's on my lips and now on my cheeks. I love to put on an outfit that I feel looks good on me and then use the colors in the outfit to actually create my makeup look. I'm using my Saint blush brush to just stipple this in. And if you're not familiar with stippling, it's just where you kind of bounce the brush off of your skin. It's more like a stamping motion than a brushing motion. Now I'm ready to go back and work on my concealer. I'm going to take my brush and just spray it with a little bit of setting spray. As I blend with the setting spray on there, it will actually thin out the concealer a little bit and it will also hold things in place once it's dried. I'll give it a moment to rest and then I'll take my little stand sponge in the corner and I'll just dab it. This is one of my favorite things about this dry sponge is that you can press it against your skin even under your eyes and remove excess makeup so that it doesn't crease up. Depending on the type of makeup you're using, you may have to press it once, wait a few minutes and then see if it's going to crease up and then press it again. But eventually you'll get all the excess makeup off and you'll still be left with some coverage though. If you saw my video yesterday, you know that I've been testing this sponge for a while and I've really come to love it. And basically I haven't used anything else since I started using it. It's just so versatile. You can use it for applying powders, applying liquid makeup, you know, blending things out and definitely removing excess makeup from wrinkles. And I think it's incredible that you basically use it dry all the time. So you don't have to run and get your sponges wet all the time. I think the first time you use it, you're supposed to get it wet. And then after that, you can use it dry forever. Now, if you're like me, you spend your life in sunscreens, you're basically pale and you really just crave getting some color on your skin. And bronzers are just a little overwhelming because of all that shimmer. Introducing What Up Beaches Matte Bronzing Powder by Elizabeth Mott. Light and buildable, no shimmer, just gives you that beautiful sun-kissed look. It's also long-lasting, sweat and oil resistant, cruelty-free, and paraben-free. I've used this as a contour, as an all-over color, and also as an eyeshadow. Now, if you're just joining me and you've never seen any of my videos before, I'll tell you that the information about all the products is going to be in the description and in the top pinned comment, so definitely check that out. Now, let's go ahead and use the Eye Method Beauty Brow Stamp Kit to apply some eyebrows. As many of you know, I have a lot of videos on eyebrows and they can all be found in my eyebrow playlist. However, this is my favorite method of applying eyebrows right now. It did take a little practice to get this down. However, now it's pretty much the super fast way. I can do this in about one minute every day and have a perfect shape of my brows and I don't have to worry about sweating these off or them coming off, even in the hot summers in Alabama. Now, if you're not familiar with playlists, if you go to my homepage on YouTube, it will show little tabs that say home, videos, shorts, live, podcast, playlists. If you tap on the playlists, I've got everything in categories. So if you have a particular area of interest, under eyes, eyebrows, contouring, any anything like that, then I'm going to have a playlist created for you. So you can go in there and quickly consume those videos to help you. Now that I've got the pink in my cheeks and my little bit of bronzer on, I feel like those colors between my earrings and my blouse are pretty much represented throughout my face and everything's looking cohesive. Now I've got to make those eyes work and I've got to make them pop. Now I didn't plan this look out. I'm still just kind of looking at those earrings and my blouse for a little bit of a roadmap. I've got a light kind of yellowy orangey base down all over my lid. And then I did tap a little bit more yellow near my lash line. 
for me, I have such a small movable lid. When I look straight ahead, it kind of disappears. So I like to put a lighter color on that area. Once this is blended out, I'm going to have to have a darker color though to actually bring all this together and to make my eyes sort of retract where I'm putting my contour. So I made a very bold move and went for this really bright pink. And rather than taking just a little bit of color and going in softly, I just decided to charge in boldly and see what happened. And all of our eye shapes differ somewhat, but for the most part, we're all going to use kind of a C shape to apply our eye color contour. For the shape of my eyes, I have to come up kind of high because if I don't, when I look straight forward and my eyes are relaxed, all the color will completely disappear. So no matter what your eye shape is, look straight ahead in the mirror and see where you need to apply color for it to be visible. And as a general rule of thumb, you can remember to apply light colors on areas that you want to actually pop out and be more noticeable and dark colors to use to contour and make things go back or recede. Let's add a little bit more yellow right on the inner eye right there. And then once we've got that on there, we'll give it just a tiny little blend in one direction. Just boop, boop, boop three times really softly to get a little gradient effect. And here's where we want to be careful. And I actually went a little bit overboard. I grabbed that pink and then I did test it on the back of my hand to see what it was going to spread like and look like on my hand. But when I went under my eye, it was still a little bit much, but I'm going to show you how to fix this. And the second thing that I kind of fudged here was I went with the same brush to the other eye, which means that one eye is going to have more makeup on it than the other. I actually did that on purpose when I saw how much the first eye had on it. And now I'm just going back and trying to smooth it out and see if I can redistribute some of that color. Dun, da, da, dun. My stan sponge comes to the rescue again. I was able to use that little tiny edge and just kind of remove a little bit of that makeup. Now that's better. Now that I've got all those pinks and yellows incorporated on my eyes, I think that's going to pull the whole look together. We need to add some lashes and then give it a final look. I chose a brown mascara because believe it or not, brown and pink look amazing together. And we're going to apply a little bit of mascara to the lower lashes before we actually do the top lashes. And the reason for this is that when you're doing your lower lashes, you're naturally opening your eye really wide and your top lashes will sometimes touch the top of your eyelid. So you don't want to have wet mascara on the top when you're actually doing the bottom. And this is a great tubing mascara, which is wonderful for hot, sweaty weather because it's not going to smudge off of your face. It also removes with water. So it's important to know that if you jump in the pool, this will not smear all over your face, but it will actually slick right off of your lashes. Now I'm going to add a couple of little falscara wisps, and then we're going to check out this whole look. These are actually the ones by Kiss that are called the Impress Press-On Lashes. You don't have to apply glue with them like the falscara. And I really loved them at first, but after buying my second set, they were totally different. They had little clumps of glue on them, and it was really weird, so... I think I prefer the falscara to these now. And if you're not familiar, the falscara type are the same little wisp. They go under, but there's a special mascara type glue that goes on there and holds them in place better than what I found with the Impress ones. Well, my friends, it's almost goodbye for us today. Please go play in your makeup. Don't be afraid to mess it up. Messing it up is where you're going to learn the most. And no matter how long you've been into makeup, you can always improve your skills by messing something up really well. Remember, mistakes are just opportunities for learning, growth, and self-improvement. Wishing you a happy day.